This is the next big thing with Ethan Lee Chalk, and the guest for today is Isaiah Katoa. How are you? Good, thank you. Yourself? Very good. Can you share with me a little about your early years in your family and growing up playing football? Um, so, yeah, I, I, was, I was born in New Zealand, um, Wellington, New Zealand. Grew up um, playing rugby union there. Um, and then playing, just playing at a local footy club. Um, and moved over to Australia, um, Sydney, Australia, when I was about 10. Um, and then I think when I moved over here was the first time I got into rugby league because we um, that was the closest place that we were, um, the closest club that we were living to. So yeah. I ended up um, playing rugby league as soon as I got over here. Um, and then roughly about, I think it was 12, maybe under, under 12, under, under um, 13. Um, found the rugby union club also, so um, ended up getting back into into rugby union, um, doing um, rugby league on Saturdays and then rugby union on Sundays, um, which was which was a pretty hectic um, schedule. But you know, it was when I look back at it now, it's um, pretty worthwhile. You didn't want to go down that rugby union path at all. Um, for me um, personally, I, I kind of wanted to explore. The rugby league pathway. Um, yeah, I just knew that it would, it would probably benefit me more as a, as a young kid going into those professional environments as a young kid um, going down the rugby league pathway. Then, um, if it was for me going down the rugby union pathway here, um, so I think that was that was what was the um, big consideration that I had to take in was um, just that. Definitely, growing up, what play was your hero? For me, I, I looked up to Benji Marshall. And we'll never forget that uh, flip pass in the 2005 Grand Final. Um, yeah, for myself, I think it was it was Benji Marshall. Um, I didn't watch much league when I was in New Zealand, actually. Especially as a playmaker um, as well. Yeah, as a playmaker myself, I always wanted to, you know, have those fancy flip passes and do those, do those massive big steps. Um, so I think he was one of them and definitely Sean Johnson as well. Um, I used to love watching the big steppers and, you know, I was all about being fancy, so that's that's what I used to um, love watching. But um, as my games develop, as I've gotten a bit older, um, I think my the one that I look up to now is probably Nathan Cleary. Yeah. Um, you know, just the way he goes about his work, um, and also met him. I met him a few times. So, um, uh, yeah, definitely him. Did he help give you like tips uh, or pieces of advice? Yeah, no, he he definitely has. Um, um, yeah, no, he definitely has um, worked with him um, when I was doing a bit of preseason with the first grade squad, um, and yeah, it's just just little things that you know many halves um, at, at younger ages wouldn't wouldn't probably understand um, and wouldn't know the meaning behind. So it was it was it was really helpful when it was coming to that kind of stuff. Yeah, what did it mean to you and your family when you were selected in the Tongan squad? Just recently, <laughs> oh, was massive. Um, you know, I I probably didn't realize myself how big that was for my family. Um, you know, obviously, I knew that it was a massive achievement, um, and it was one of my goals to just be a part of the team and just be selected in that team. So, to be selected at um, such a young age it was just it was pretty surreal, um, and it, it kind of didn't really hit me until I got over to New Zealand. And then I was, um, and just seeing my family, you know, made a bit more. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, go on, go on, go on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just made it a bit more, um, surreal that, you know, I, I, I am in the, in my, in the team, in the, my national team. Um, so no, it was, it was, it was amazing. Um, even though I didn't play, just getting, getting the experience of being there with those older boys, um, and just learning off those guys, like it was just an awesome experience. Is that where you're trying to aim for, like to make like the be a regular player in the Tongan squad? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, that's that's probably the next step um, from now for for me from from now on. Um, but you know, I I know that I'm still young and I sort of buy my time and um, kind of earn my way into that squad. Um, you know, it's a pretty it's a pretty good forward pack, forward pack to be playing off, say, you know, um, 
there. Um, they don't have many, many, many halves coming through the grades. So I think I kind of, I'm pretty fortunate that, you know, I'm at the right age now where I can start developing, um, you know, and I could be, I could, you know, be the next, next um, kind of sort of halves that come, come through just learning off, you know, the halves that are already there, like um, Junior Mone, um, they still got Tui Lola here. I'm still there. So, you know, I, I, in no words, I'm trying to you know, take this spot. Um, but just going there and just learning off them will be, will be pretty cool. If you had the chance to either uh, play for Australia or play for Tonga, which one would you choose? There's kind of been some discussion recently, especially with like, you know, Brian Toto and Jerome Luai, like representing Samoa instead of Australia. If, if it came down to it, who would you uh, play for? Um, for me personally, um, I'll definitely represent Tonga first. Um, and I'm, I'm Tongan at heart. Um, I wasn't born in Australia, but I do qualify um, to play for Australia. Um, so I think that's where that's where um, I kind of make my decision is where, you know, I'm Tongan at heart. I'm not Australian at heart. So, Congratulations on the schoolboy selection as well, but Aussie schoolboy selection. Nah, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. And obviously a new club next year. How did you feel when the Dolphins first reached out to sign you? Man, that was crazy. Um, I did not expect that. Um, you know, obviously, I knew that there was a new club um, coming into the competition, but you know, I didn't expect that they would come after me. Um, you know, come come straight away, which was which was pretty awesome. Um, you know, that process of just meeting and talking and all of that kind of stuff went pretty quick. Um, you know, and it didn't it didn't take long for us to kind of lean towards one way. Um, but at the end of it, I, I knew that I had to choose what was right for myself. Um, you know, there's no you know better coach to get coached by than Wayne. Um, yeah. And also a massive opportunity with a new club coming into the comp. So I'm uh, pretty excited for it. Have you had any chats or talks with Wayne Bennett yet? Yeah, yeah, I've had a, I've had a few um, few talks to him, but they're just more general. Just how's everything going? How's school going? You know. Just, you know, look after my footy, look after my injuries and just get ready for next year. Like, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be crazy. Oh, sorry, the end of the year. Um, yeah, get, this year. Get, get fit for the preseason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you got a few um, Penrith boys joining you uh, at the Dolphins next year. If you could pick one player from the whole NRL competition, who would you want to join? Who would you want um, to join you at the Dolphins with? Oh. I don't know, actually. Um, that's Can I just kind of put you on the spot here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I think... I don't know who I've, who I've always wanted to play alongside. Um, I think you know, it's not going to happen, but it would be awesome to, to, to play alongside... Um, to play alongside Nathan. Yeah. Um, just... Especially, you know, to work if, let's say, for example, like if he was at the same club and we were playing together in the halves, like just learning off him, just watching how he goes about his work, watching what he does on the field, off the field. So I think that's that's probably one. You might have to so, wait. I think it's four or five years his contract ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So hopefully he can come out to you after the after he's finished his stint at Penrith, but he'll probably be a lifer there. Yeah, no, you You know, I don't, I don't think he will, but you know, who knows? Who knows? Something could happen. So, yeah. How does it feel to have people talking about you as one of the most promising young prospects coming through? Does that place like a lot of pressure on you? Ah, uh, no, I wouldn't say that. That puts a lot of pressure on me. Um, you know, I know I'm kind of lucky that I've I've had a good support. Um, group around me to kind of keep me grounded, um, you know, keep me keep me humble. Make sure I know that, you know, not nothing. I, you know, I haven't really done anything yet. Um, you know, I'm still young. I still got a lot to learn. Still got a lot to do. Um, you know, I still have goals that I want to achieve. So, you know, when I when I, it's a bit hard to kind of stay away from that stuff because you know everyone's tagging me and. Um, you know, I'm getting I'm getting commented and tagged in it, but you know I'm not 
yeah, I make sure I don't let that stuff kind of affect what I'm what I'm trying to do. Um, Does it feel like surreal to be known like as the next like Jonathan Thurston or like you know best number six and seven? <laughs> nah, nah, there's no way I would compare myself to Jonathan Thurston. <laughs> but but um, no, nah, it is it is surreal that you know that people people are talking about myself. Um, but like I said before, you know, I, I got, I got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, I got a lot of goals that I want to achieve in life as well. So, um, you know, and I'm not even, I haven't even, um, achieved most of them yet. So, um, no, definitely, definitely pretty awesome that my name's out there, but you know, I, I got to keep myself grounded and humble at the same time. Yeah. And your brother played for the Panthers and the Bulldogs uh, before you. Is there a dream for both of you to play together in the same team at some point? Yeah. I mean, that would be awesome. Um, you know, playing alongside your brother in the same team would be would be unreal. But, you know, I know um, that sometimes circumstances might not lead us in the same direction. Um, uh, yeah, so he, he obviously has a a young family that he's got to look after at the moment. So, you know, footy's not footy's not his um, priority at the moment. And for me, it's a bit different. I'm not, you know, I'm still young, um, you know, still got school. So, but, you know, um, down the track, we could end up end up playing together. But, you know, I, I don't put pressure on him to, um, you know, try and come back and play with me before, you know, before his, that he gets a bit too old and, um you know, before he kind of hangs up the boots, but yeah. Would you say awesome. he? Would you say he helped you develop as a player, especially like you know, growing up, uh, watching him since he's older and stuff. You get to learn a bit off him, and then obviously um, take away. He he gets to give you tips and things. Yeah, no, I think I think if anything, he's been one of the biggest influences in my life. Um, you know, in my footy career as well, just. Because he's done it and he's been there, he he kind of knows, you know, the ins and outs of of the of the whole thing, the whole, um, you know, NRL being a professional athlete, you know, what to eat, what not to eat, um, you know, little things like stretching on your own, um, if you need, go and work on your extras. Um, so all of those kind of things, he's always been, um, you know, kind of like a second father figure to me, yeah. um, just being my my, my oldest brother. Um, but yeah, I think he himself and and my, and my dad have been um, two of the most kind of influential people in my life, especially in my footy career as well. Um, but I think if there's one thing that that points out is more the stuff that he's given me off the field. Um, you know, just how to how to deal with adversity and um, how to how to hold myself around other people. Um, so. I think, yeah, that's that's one of the biggest things that he's done for me. It will be so different, especially like playing at like, not, not like the NRL level yet, but like the fans have a big impact once you make that step. Like when you, when you debut, there'll be, there'll be so much like, you know, bad attention or good attention. It's always like, you know, with the media or the fans. So it's good that they've helped you uh, with all that adversity and stuff. And then they can teach you like what not to say or what to say. So you don't like yeah. make any controversial comments or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, I've, I've, I'm pretty fortunate to have a brother that's been able to experience that. Um, so he's just kind of passed it down to me just so you know, when I get there, I'm, I'm well prepared and I know what to do. Um, so, yeah. What advice would you give to the younger generation who are hoping to play in the NRL one day? Um, I think I think the the biggest advice that I would give the younger boys is just um, make sure you get around, um, you get get yourself a good good um, support network. Um, yeah. I think you know a lot of a lot of people get too sidetracked with you know that whatever happens in footy happens and then whatever happens off the field, you know, you can kind of just be, um, be an idiot or something like that. So I think make sure you just get, get a good support network. Um, I'm lucky that, you know, I have friends as well that um, a good bunch of um, boys that keep me grounded as well. They know that, you know, no matter how, how big I'll get in this sport, they'll, you know, they'll, um, always they'll always hold hold me accountable and they'll always you know 
um, pick me up on something if, if, if needed. So, and that's what's helped me um, be a better person off the field as well. So I think if you can be a better person off the field and on the field, um, your, your abilities will take care of it. It's good to have a life away from football as well. Like so many players now, fo- fo- football is obviously like your life at the moment, but like, you know, I was um, just hearing about, you know, Jarrell Yayi, great player, but unfortunately like a couple of knee injuries can't play footy anymore. So it's good that you have like a life outside of football as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, I think I've been a bit fortunate that um, my dad got himself into golf. Um, so last year during lockdown, we got a bit bored. No, there was no footy on the weekend. So every weekend we, he kind of took me out. Um, and now he's, he's got me hooked on it. I, I, I love my golf. I'm, I'm, so into it, so every every day that I, you know I have off, I'll I'll try and find something to do, um, going to the range or um, going and playing a few holes at the course. So, no, you might like have that. to I'm, you might have to challenge some of the NRL boys to a game or some. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't challenge them. My games, my game is terrible. Uh, <laughs> you still got plenty of time to work on that goal. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm happy that I got into it as, a, as a young kid. So I, you know, I got plenty of time to, to get better. Hopefully, hopefully that's the goal. Just one last, one last quick question. You mentioned your dad and your brother as your inspiration. Do you draw any inspiration from anyone else in particular? Um, I think probably my two grandfathers. Um, you know, just and that's more just what they. You know what they did off the field. Um, you know, look at how they looked after our families. Um, how they both moved from the Pacific Islands um, to New Zealand to give our families better lives. So, just taking things like that. Um, hopefully, I can I can kind of use that when I get a bit older, um, yeah. and when I you know, to kind of set up my kids and my family. So. And it's good to help, like you know, the young Tongan kids coming through the ranks or living over there at the moment, like it's good to know that they can also like follow in your footsteps as well. Oh, exactly. Exactly. I think, you know, back in, what was it? I think it was 2017 um, when, you know, the likes of Jason Tomalolo, Andrew Fafita um, turned away, you know, Kiwis and kangaroo um, opportunities to, to come and represent their country, um, come and represent, represent their heritage, um, so for the for the young Tongan kids and Samoan kids and um, all the Pacific Islander kids to see those you know those high profile players do that, um, it just kind of uh, changes their perspective on everything. Um, yeah. You know, not everything is not everything is about the Tier One nations. You know, you can always be always be proud to go and represent where you're from and your heritage and your parents' heritage. So, um, no, it's good that they've done that. And you can see that from all the fans as well. Oh, exactly. You just see how passionate they are. Um, <laughs> and they're, they're some, they are some crazy fans, but it's, it's unreal, man. Yeah, you definitely would have seen it over in New Zealand. <laughs> definitely. That was, that, was, that was pretty cool. No, that was pretty cool to see that. Awesome. Thanks so much, Isaiah, for your time. It's really appreciated. And no, I, awesome. I wish Thank you um, all the best, especially uh, not, not too far away, away from the preseason for the Dolphins now. Yeah, definitely. Not too far. A couple months now. Yeah, so good luck with that.